Hey guys, this is Evan from Stock Music Musician, and in this video you're going to learn how to sample in Reason. This basically, um, what you're going to do is you're going to learn how to take a sound you create within Reason, make a sample of it within Reason, and then manipulate that as a sample. So, I just put in a quick little part here uh, for the melody that we're going to sample. It tends to sound nice if you've got reverbs and delays. It creates some weird artifacts when you actually go to sample. Uh, the thing I want to tell you also is that part one of this video, we're going to go just sort of quickly teach you how to sample, how to take the file. Part two will tell you some advanced techniques. Okay, so we've got this pattern plugged in. So to make a sample of it, what you do is you hit tab to flip the rack around. And by default, when you come up to this hardware section, let's just get this out of the way, we don't need the sequencer. So by default, it's probably gonna show up like this. You need to hit the audio IO button right here, which will bring up the audio interface. It's at the very top, and you notice this section here, the sampling input. Well, basically, you can pretend as if there's a recording insert in Reason. So whatever you put into here, let's just disconnect everything, is what's gonna be recorded and sampled. So you would drag it from the sampling input, and we're just gonna take the parallel output of the circle bell, of the bell pattern. You could use anything. You could use the direct out if you wanted to, or the audio out here, but we're not using the parallel out at the moment. So let's do that, and you'll see, if you monitor it here, this is the sampling. Turn up the volume and turn it down there. Uh, so. We've now got that going into the sampling input. So what we now need to do is take a sample of it. So there's only three devices, I believe, in Reason, maybe four, where you can actually create the sample, or you can do sampling. One of them is going to be the Kong. One is the N NNXT, which is what we're going to use today. And you might be able to do it with grain. I'm not sure. Uh, but NNXT is the way to go usually because it's the sampler. So we're just gonna right click on it and we're going to reset the device. That means that there's gonna be no samples loaded into the NNXT. By default, there's a piano. So what you wanna look for is this little icon here, this little sound wave. That means you're gonna be sampling. So if you see an instrument that has this start sampling button, then you can use it for sampling. So what we have to do is hit play and then we have to hit the start sampling. It's kind of annoying. I wish it would start playing when you hit it, but anyway. Let's just see what this sounds like. Let's turn it up because you don't have much control. Let's do that again. I, I think it cut out a little weirdly. So. If I didn't like it, I could also edit the sample, but we're not going to do that today. So here's, I'm just got my keyboard here. Let me put uh, just something on to boost the sound. So we'll just do a, or we'll just do a compressor just because we got the gain on it. So the thing you need to notice about the NNXT is that the speed changes along with the pitch. So that can be tough, but it's also a tool you can use to your advantage, which we'll dig into in a second. So there you see, that's, that's basically how you sample and reason. But if you stay tuned, I'm going to show you some advanced things. If not, I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. Like and subscribe, or if you've got another way of sampling and reason, let me know. So, just sort of to give you an example, we've got a beat here, a break, and we can do something like we gotta get the timing right. And then, 
you know, you can start getting really crazy with it. So that's version 1.0, but we can go even farther and make our sample sound even cooler. So what I want to do is uh, we're going to create a new sample. Same, same sound. We're just going to do this version 2.0. So the first thing I want to do is we'll reset the device again. And we're going to go back to here. And I'm going to insert a few plugins to give us just a little more vibe. So the first thing we're going to do is an Audiomatic. And we'll do vinyl. Yeah, we're going to get some scratches and some pops. Then we're going to do a screen for the bit crushing. And that's, I believe, digital is the bit resolution and rate. So we probably need to check the damage off. So that's, that's good enough for this. Now let's take a sample again. All right, so we've got a slightly different sample than last time with clicks and then we want to turn off this high quality interpolation that will make this sample just sound worse. So now if we kick up the beat, All right, so that's pretty cool. Now we're actually gonna go to version three of cool sampling. So, and this will be the final thing, but again, I totally recommend liking and subscribing. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna try and capture the drums and the sample all in one take. And then when we start triggering things, you're gonna get all these weird little bits and pieces, uh, which is half the fun. So similar to what I just did, I'm gonna hit tab and turn off high quality interpolation on the drums and turn on low ba bandwidth, which is going to make them a little more lo fi. Um, now we just hit the. All right, so now. All right, this is where I tricked myself because we didn't have them both going into the sampling input. So what we're gonna do instead is take the um, control room output, that'll work, and send it there. So if you look at the mixer, this is like meant for a control room in the studio, but you've also got right here, control room out. So we're gonna use that. But let's delete this thing because that's silence. So. All right, so now So if we uh, do group mono, and it means you can only hit one note at a time. Which lets you do some cool stuff. Um, anyway. Better 
after now that you've got this sample, I don't. What I'd like to do here is chop it into little bits uh, at a pitch I like. So then, like for example, what you could do for advanced sampling version four, we'll just hold down or go to the sequencer. We could draw it in whatever. Um, Let's see what happens if we drop it enough. Too slow. So that's got a, a nice little bit of distortion. Now we're going to double click on it and hit bounce in place. We're sampling the sample. Yeah. So now let's mute the NNX team. We've got just a wave file here. Which we can't hear because what? Because it's not sold. Okay. The wave file. It would be nice if it was a perfect wave. Doesn't matter for or a perfect loop. Doesn't matter for our purposes. What I want to do now is turn this into a Dr. Rex loop. Yay! So, um. If we go to slice edit mode, which is what you have to do in order to enable editing something in a Rex loop, you see you've got all these slices, which you want to spend some time editing, but we're not going to do that today. And then you go bounce to Rex loop. And now let's drop this Rex loop into here. Sure. Nope, that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is double. If I double click on it, there we go. Okay. So now I've got a Rex loop that, if I play it, it's still not the perfect loop. But the thing about Rex, uh, when you hit, well, you don't have to hit select slice for MIDI to see this, but I want to show you. Instead of now using the keyboard to control the pitch, we're using the keyboard to control the slice. So, something like that. And then maybe pitch it down 12. Who knows what that'll sound like. All right, so I think that's enough on sampling and reason, but I just wanted to show you how, A, you can start sampling and reason, and then how it's sort of this crazy fun process that builds into itself and creates some really cool, fun, exciting things down the road. So I hope you liked this, and if you did, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.